Whoa, trippy man. Hello, my name is Bob. I'm going to give you a demonstration of the iPhone app Headspace, version 1.1. Here we have an iPhone. Down there at the lower right, we have Headspace. When you first start it up, you're asked to enter an item of text. I'm going to use the word Runcible. Runcible is kind of a pseudo-nonsense word. However, it's been used a lot in literature and science and stuff, so I'm going to use it as the basis for this tutorial. We have a group here. I can make a child of the group. I'm going to make an item called Spoon. One of the most common uses of the word Runcible is the Runcible Spoon. Um, some people say that it's kind of long, like a ladle. Other people say it has serrated edges, uh, like the sporks that you get at KFC. So we're going to make a child item of the spoon group, the spoon item, rather, called Spork. Okay, now we have three items. One's a group called Runcible. We have a child item of Runcible called Spoon, and a child of Spoon called Spork. If I use two fingers, I can rotate that view, and you can get a better look at how the objects are organized. So a child item sinks backward in Z. I can scroll the view just by dragging anywhere on the screen, um, as long as I'm not dragging on the selected item. So let's make another child of this group. We'll call this one Nooth. And it's for Donald Nooth, a computer scientist who wrote a compiler in the 80s called Runcible. So we're going to make a child of the Nooth item and call that compiler. Okay, and finally let's make an item called uh, literature. And this is going to be for various uses of the word Runcible in literature. Now what I want to do, I'm going to make this after the current item, even though it should actually be one level up in my list. So now if you... If you look, you can see that I've made literature actually a child of Nooth, when it really should be up there on the same level as Spoon and Nooth. So what I can do is just have that item selected. If I hold down my finger, it zooms into it. And if I drag to the left, it pops out into the, uh, the level right above it. I can use a pinching motion to shrink the view. Now, um, another thing you can do is if you select an item and double tap it, its child items get stacked below it in the Z axis. So here I can stack compiler behind Nooth and spork behind Spoon. Um, let's make some uh, children for the literature item. Say child of this item. Uh, one of the first uses, or maybe the, the first use of the word Runcible was in a poem called The Owl and the Pussycat. So we're going to make an item called Owl and Pussycat. And let's make another item called Gravity's Rainbow. In the novel Gravity's Rainbow by Thomas Pynchon, there is a Runcible spoon fight between a bunch of sailors. Okay, so there we have Gravity's Rainbow. Now what we want to do is make a whole nother group, and this will be just a totally different topic, just uh, favorite authors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap this empty space between all the buttons down here at the bottom, and what that does is it deselects everything. Now if I hit the blue button, I can make a new group. I'm going to call it Authors. And that gets created next to our old group. Uh, I'm going to change the color of this, hit that orange button, and that's, that's the button that you hit when you want to edit your selected item. So I could change the text up here. I can add links, which we'll take a look at in a second. I could uh, give the item a checkbox if you want to do like a to-do item. Um, but all I want to do right now is change the color. So here I have a bunch of colors. I can select one of these, or uh, if I double tap an, a color, then I can pick my own color. But uh, I was pretty happy with that one, so we'll just use that. Okay, now let's make a couple of children of the authors group. And let's start with uh, Dickens. Okay, then we'll make uh, Pinchon, the aforementioned. And let's see, how about Gaddis? Nobody ever thinks of Gaddis. And then, uh, okay, let's say Stephen King. Okay, and like I said before, if you have an item selected, you can just drag it up and down to reorder it in the list. If you drag it to the right, it becomes a child of the item above it. If you drag it to the left, then it pops back out into the level above it. Okay, so what we want to do is... Uh, Let's see, let's make one more group. Um, we can just scroll up an empty space, and I'm going to tap right here. And I don't know if you saw that, it makes like a little blue mark there. That tells it that when I make a new group, I want it to try to place it there in space. So let's call this one Movies. Okay, let's change its color. Get a blue color. And uh, let's make a child of that. How about uh, Bubble? And let's see, maybe uh, Gummo. Okay, now we've got three groups, and I can, uh, I can get to them by scrolling around. 
Um, I can also hit this world view button and what that will do is always zooms back to show you the entire view. Sometimes when you're using this program you'll get like a you can get it all flipped around and screwed up and if you ever need to get it back to you know a stable state or you know a place where you can see everything just hit that red button and it'll zoom you all the way back. Um, what you can also do is I mentioned the nothing button before if you tap it it selects nothing but if you hold it down it brings up a menu and that lets you travel instantly to any of your groups. So there it's like movies. I can travel, go, go to authors, or I can go to our original one, Runcible. Now let's make a link between uh, Gravity's Rainbow and uh, the author of Gravity's Rainbow, Thomas Pynchon. So what we want to do is uh, we got Gravity's Rainbow selected, hit the edit button, and click on add link. Now we're going to, uh, we can either scroll over to this group, or I can use the, uh, the nothing button to select the author's group. And there's Pynchon. If I tap it, then you notice that word link appears. If I tap it again, it un uh, you get unlink. So once you have an item linked, there's a line connecting it between the two items. Let me uh, zoom back a little bit so you can see that. Okay, so let's go out to our our view. There we've got uh, the link between our two items. If you want to uh, move this group, say it's a little bit too close to the Runcible group, all you got to do is tap the group name and then slide it around. So you can position groups in space that way. People that downloaded the 1.0 version of Headspace um, that's a little bit different. It used to it used to move groups just by tapping anywhere on the group, but uh, I just found that you don't really move groups so much, so I made it I made it work that way. Um, here you see, as I mentioned before, if you uh, if you just tap and hold your finger, it, after about a second, it'll start zooming in towards an item. Okay, um, that's basically mostly. Let's see. Okay, here's something else you can do. Uh, you can copy and paste now. If you select an item, go to the edit menu. If you hit copy, and uh, then once you've copied it, if you look at the nothing button now, there's a little little man down there. That just shows you that you have got something on your clipboard. Now if we go to uh, one of our other groups, say authors, and uh, we select an item, we can hit the plus button. And now we have a choice to either add a new item, paste what's on the clipboard, or erase the clipboard. So let's paste. Paste after the selected item. And it asks if you want to erase the clipboard. Okay, let's say no. And now see bubble I've pasted down there below Gaddis. Um, Bubble's not an author though, so I'm actually going to delete that now that I've pasted it. So under the edit menu, you can hit delete item, and that's how you delete something. Okay. So now what I want to do uh, is go, if you use this gear icon, that brings up the settings menu. Um, you also have, you have a color setting here. That's just sort of the default color. Um, you also have a button to organize your groups. If you find that the groups are getting all out of whack, you can hit that, and the, the program will place them just sort of on a grid, grid um, array. Uh, you have preferences. Um, not much there except to ch turn off the question or turn it back on as to whether you want to read the instructions and also whether new items you create have default checkboxes. Um, the help is accessible from the upper right up here. You can read the instructions, which is just a basically big manual here. You can also uh, tap here to go to a YouTube video, which I'm making right now, or the uh, website. But what I wanted to do is go to the file browser. This is where you can make totally different sets of groups. And here I've got one that I've made before. I'm going to load that in. and. Uh, you can see I have a whole bunch of items. And uh, I'm going to go to my done group. And if you look down here, I've still got the item from the other file in my clipboard. So I can tap an item, paste, and so now I'm going to erase the clipboard. And I've transported this bubble item from one file to another. So that's something you can do. Um, here's an item with a checkbox if you want to see what that looks like. And when you have an item with a checkbox, you can just click on the box there to uh, turn the check on or off. Uh, let's see, I think that's about it. Uh, at least for the basics. The final thing I'd like to show you is that you can email a primitive version of your uh, spaces. If you go to the settings menu in the file browser, you click on this blue button, send via email, and uh, it will leave Headspace. Go open up the Apple Mail app. Hello, I had to cut. I think the uh, Apple Wireless had some sort of RF interference. Anyway, this uh, Headspace has a primitive email export. You can see sort of a text list of the items. Hopefully in the next version we'll have like the ability to send real files, but for now, that's what you can send yourself a list. Okay, that concludes the tutorial with Little Mai. This is Bob saying so long. See you next time, and I hope you enjoy using Headspace.